Hello, beautiful soul, and welcome to the Connecting Soul Beings podcast, offering you inspiration, tips, and learning about tuning into the language of your soul and gain a deep, intuitive understanding of your inner self, your guides, and the animals around you, so you are able to live from your heart with grace, love, and gratitude. We bring together spiritual leaders, energy healers, and awakened humans, so we are able to collaborate and help you feeling loved, joyful, and free by providing clear direction on how to connect soul to soul. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Connecting Soul Beings podcast. Today, it's my absolute honor to introduce you to Jen Jeremias from the U.S., Jen is a trained clinical research scientist and an expert in the usage of essential oils. She is a wellness counselor for pets and is the co-author of the top-selling book about aromatherapy, which is called Spoil Your Pet, and it's a practical guide to using essential oils in dogs and cats. Now, Jen is also an energy and a Reiki practitioner, and we had a lovely conversation about our pets about essential oils, how we can tune into ourselves. We spoke about grounding and what we can do to listen to ourselves and our pets so that we all have a happy and healthy life together. Please enjoy this wonderful conversation. So what I'm really curious about with your scientific background, you know, as a clinical research scientist, how does that work with you know, the energy and the natural healing practices that you do? Because that's always a fascinating area for me, like, cover, you know, merging the science with the natural healing, because often people see that as two completely separate industries, yeah. whereas I see you really merging that together in the work that you do. So how does that work for you? Well, I think that, you know, for me, when I come to a situation or a circumstance that somebody's talking to me regarding their, their pet or themselves, it's not like I ever separate out the science. You know what I mean? It's so much of who I am now that I kind of keep it always in the back burner of the conversation. And if I have something to share, then at, like add later on in correspondence or in a follow-up, then I'll definitely bring it in. Uh, and so it's always there. And I think people like the fact that it's always part of me because I think people quote unquote, thinks it, bring, <laughs> thinks it brings credibility, even though I'm not so sure, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, yeah. But um, I do love the value of it. I think what I find so cool as I, as I go through into the more, the energy work, the healing part, that's not, let's say so scientific, or we might not label as scientific um, is how often they overlap. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. so, you know, things like where you would look at an area of the body that particularly holds, you know, in your work and my work, we always say that parts of the body hold emotions, you know, kind of thing. And then you look at the personality of the pet and the ailment they have, and you think, oh my gosh, this really Mm -hmm. makes so much sense, you know? And so I love when things like that happen because it's just a testament to, I think, both and the fact that both play a role, which is why I love merging both, because I don't think, I think you need both to heal. You Mm -hmm. know, I think you need to, you know, we all know that we can have something happen and we need to go to the doctor or we need to get it taken care of. And we need that sort of maybe more Western or traditional medicine, but we also need the whole energetic healing and on top of it. And if you really want to totally heal, And that's how I look. If I really want to totally help an animal, I've got them. Like I I have to take into account both. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And in particular, because you're also using the essential oils, right? Mm -hmm. As part of the healing that you offer for for pets. Mm -hmm. And um, from what I know, through my experience and my own, um, you know, very limited research (laughs) on essential oils, it can be quite dangerous for animals to to have, you know, to work with essential oils. So I can definitely appreciate then that your scientific background comes in very handy to understand probably the properties of the oils that we then apply for the pets as well. Yeah, um, I think it is important. And I think we, you know, I always look at essential oils as one is their concentration and their power is so 
strong. Mm -hmm. And we have to realize that if we're using it on most of us, you know, at least in the realm that I'm working with, it's either dogs, cats, sometimes horses, but mostly, you know, smaller animals is their body size. You know, mm -hmm. if we, you know, <laughs> have to think, I always think of pets as babies, you know, I would not use the same amount of, of essential oil on myself that I would on an infant. Yeah. And I look at my pets as being the same. I also would limit the use of essential oils like I would with an infant. There are certain oils I would never use on a baby, you know? And so I kind of take the same approach when I'm working with an animal, you know, I could rather go milder and try those first, let's say. And then maybe if I have to, under extreme circumstances, look to oils that are stronger, but that's not going to be the, my go-to first mm -hmm. by any means, you know, especially mm -hmm. for common issues. Yeah. You know, why go there? Yeah. 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 So, so what are some of the things that you would use first? Um, I love, you know, I think I go back to some of the more, what we would call the biblical oils. So I love frankincense. I love myrrh, uh, I love, yeah. you know, lavender, um, copaiba is um, a go-to. Um, probably my favorite oil is frankincense. You know, I yeah. still, you know, I use it every day on my pets, on myself. Um, you know, and then there are a few other oils, geranium, which is strong, but, you know, I use, you know, um, quite often. I'm trying to think of what else we go to. I use quite a bit of juniper berry. I mm -hmm. like it. Good for fear and anxiety and good for some, um, you know, just helping things move out of the body quickly. And there are mm -hmm. certain oils that I tend not to use, you know, really at all. You know, some of the stronger, hotter oils, which I tend to avoid. And that's one also because I'm I'm always, my goal is always, can I make this experience positive? Like, can yeah. I not, I don't want any of my, the clients I work with, I don't want any of my own pets for me to take out an oil bottle and for me have to like, you know, chase them around my house, trying to apply it to them, <laughs> you know, like, because then as we all know, if you have pets, then it becomes a game and to them yes. it is a game. And so they yes. do it just because they're like, Oh great. Mom's going to play with me, you know, like her dad's going to play with me, you know, but I, you know, I want the experience to be more calming and much more of a healing process rather than a game. That's just the way I like to work. So yeah, I always like to keep it positive. So I don't usually choose oils that I really am afraid that are going to be too strong, that are going to maybe cause the skin to tingle at all or anything, because, you know, they're smart. And once they don't like it once, forget it. You're not getting oil on yeah. them again. You know, just yeah. I've learned through the years. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Do, do you tend to um, tune in and you know, connect with the pet in a way that you understand that they tell you, you know, what it is that they need. Or if you apply an oil where you all of a sudden get this intuition and mm, this is not the right one for them. If anything, it happens much more before where right. I'll sit there and I'll get like, oh, this is the oil they need. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, the people I work with can't understand it. And then I'll mm -hmm. find some sort of, you know, research somewhere because they'll say, I read up on that oil and it just doesn't make sense why you would want that oil. Kind of, you know, you would choose that yeah. oil. And then, you know, some people are just like, it's okay. I don't really, I don't really need to know. And other people are like, and then I'll come back with something and I'll say, oh, okay, well, you know, and I'll send it to them, you know, like according to so-and-so it's good for, you know, respiratory stuff or something, you know, yeah. breathing. And they'll be like, oh, okay, now I get it. You know, yes. but usually it comes in before. Mm. you know yeah for me for me anyway it comes yeah. in before yeah yeah or and while i'm talking or while i'm talking sometimes you know i'll get in touch you know I get more information about the pet or usually but some of the, a lot of those things come before you even meet yeah yeah because you're very much in tune as well i assume yeah i, yeah, I, I um yeah it's an interesting place to be but i am and always, and always have been, um, you know, my, I used to call my friends and I would say, you need to use this oil and they would like, and I would be like, don't ask me why I'm just telling you need to use it. Yeah. And then like, they would tell, you know, and then later I would find out something and it would make sense. But 
I think sometimes I don't even understand why, but I'm just like, okay, that's what I need. That's what they need. That's what they need. <laughs> I'll just you know? go with it. I'll just go with it. Exactly. I'll just go with it. Yeah. There's, a, there's a reason why. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Cause I've got similar experience too. When I tune into the animals, they usually tell me exactly what they need and not just the oils. They also tell me around um, some of the, they're compatible with the back flower essences mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in Australia. We've got the Australian bush flower essences. Um, so often I get information around that as well. And, um, you know, but then I also do my research, like, why do I, you know, get that through? What is that? What is the purpose of that particular essence? You know, and I do the similar thing with the oils as well. What is the particular purpose of that? And then it usually ties in with the experience that the animal has mm -hmm. on, you know, and then I go, ah, okay, that's why they choose that particular oil. Right. So, and I get that through for their vitamins, their minerals, yeah. foods, mm -hmm. you know, they tell me I don't want this food anymore, but I need that food instead. So it's, it's, um, but it's like you say, you go with that, you know, it's, it's literally them sharing that with you at that energetic level and, and we just have to trust it. That's right. And sometimes it's related, you know, I've had it relate a lot to like, when I work with someone, I'm always, especially, well, even if it comes from a breeder, but especially if someone rescues an animal, I try mm -hmm. to get as much information about the history or what they know of, of the history of that pet, because I feel like, you know, most of the time when you rescue an animal, there is a history you know, mm -hmm. some sort of circumstance which surrounded their, um, you getting them. And, yeah. you know, when I got my dog, he had been to two fosters, was in a kill shelter before he came to me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that comes with its own scars and its own, you know, trauma and everything like that. So when I ask, it's a lot of times within the history that I'll be like, oh, okay, all of a sudden it'll make sense to me why mm. that oil came through for me mm. or why I had a feeling when I met them, you know, yeah. you know, it was yeah. like, Oh, okay. Now I understand when I walked out the room in the room and I got a particular vibe where that vibe was coming from. Yes. Yes. It's almost like a validation as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> Definitely. And, sometimes, and sometimes when it happens, you're like, Oh, okay. Now I get it. You know, like that. Feeling yes. of, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, because our human sometimes doesn't believe that what we get through is indeed the case. But then when you do get that validation, it's like, oh, OK, yeah, got it. <laughs> got it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because for me, it works slightly differently. I, I prefer not to know about the animal at all, because that really leaves it a blank slate so that I can receive the information directly. And then there is the validation that comes in where I share all the information and then the client goes, Ah, oh, yeah, no, I get it because of X, Y, Z. And then I go, oh, okay, well, that makes sense then. <laughs> you know, because if I know more about the animal, then that becomes in the way of that connection. And therefore, I feel like the channel may not be as clear mm -hmm. because then all those ideas are already popping up. So, yeah, that's fascinating that you, you do gain that information beforehand. And then have the I mean some yeah, sometimes I mean it's like I said, sometimes I'll get a feeling before and mm. then as they share their history, all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, okay. I you know, yeah. it just validates that. And yeah, sometimes exactly. you know, and sometimes I don't get that information, but I still I still hold enough value in whatever that is. That's mm -hmm. the you know, that I feel like it's worth like I always listen to it. You know, and I, yeah. and usually at one point or another during the relationship, it will come through, like yeah. the validation will come through Yes, at some point. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So how did you get into the, how did you get to discover that you could do that? And especially if, you know, from that scientific background as well, that must've been a little bit of a, a you know, an interesting experience for it's you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, I, I, you know, I got that experience. I always had this very, I, I always had a very attuned um, nature to pets, like animals. I always mm -hmm. was very connected to them from childhood all through. Yeah. Uh, always loved animals, would basically 
you know, at, at one point when I was like 10 years old, I remember listening to the, like listening to some, going to a, like a, a zoo one day and there was a woman inside petting this tiger. And I was just like in awe. And then when I was in college, they had something on the news that somebody like there was an, a, a lion up for adoption. <laughs> and I called my mother and my mother was like, Jan, no, you're not getting it. <laughs> you know, like you can't get a lion, but I always had this strong connection. And then I remember having, you know, when I, um, got my first dog and I think that, you know, what, well, dogs and adults, and that was really mine. And I took care of, I think that it's very interesting that the bond you create with your animals, you know, that mm -hmm. whole connection, which goes beyond words, which I don't even know if we do it justice mm -hmm. when we try to describe it with words. Yeah. And when she got ill, I was all of a sudden, um, really delving for options for her. It was, I didn't really like what traditional veterinary medicine was offering me um, as far as options. And I was like, well, I've got to do something. And what can I do? And I had a friend who worked with essential oils and she introduced me to them. And I remember I was very skeptical. I mean, I did come from that very strong sort of science Western area. And I really didn't pay much heat or weight to it. I thought that I, I mean, I knew smells were nice, but I really didn't think it held it held much value beyond that. And when I started to use them on her and they worked, I remember thinking to myself, originally I thought, you know, it was an accident. I was like, it's a fluke, you know, it's just, you know, and then after let's say three, four days where I was seeing these really um, unbelievable results, I was like, oh, this is really interesting. And then my scientific brain, you know, like I just, uh, how much research could I do? How many courses could I take? How many, you know, <laughs> what else could I learn? But along the way, as I was doing it, I think that that kind of intuition and that sort of sense that I could feel and know what they needed, even beyond my scientific brain, I think has just developed over time. I think that it, the more I, the more animals I came into contact with and the more people I spoke to and the more I just would think about it on my own or my own time or just feel it, the more magnified it became. And I think it was always there. It's just that, you know, our brains tend to get in the way, you know, our yeah. thinking brain anyway, you know, so. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Because, yeah, because I always had these, when I started really connecting into it, for me, that was quite a, a challenging time because I had a very analytical, you know, sort of research type mind as well. And, you know, getting that into alignment was quite a challenge. Yeah. How did you cope with that? Um, I, I think I think I coped with it by looking for the science in in the oils and trying to explain it on a scientific level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think when you work with plants or herbs or oils or whatever, even nutrition, you realize that that all holds energy. Yeah. You know, it's alive. And yeah. so I think that I looked at it from a scientific point of view, but then when you start to think about it, you're like, okay, well, this is plant material. And it's alive and it has, it's going to have a different effect and different energy than a chemical that comes that's pre-synthesized. And, you know, so I think I started to look at it even amongst the level of like the essential oils themselves is not looking at them scientifically, but beyond scientifically. And I think that that's why in a way, when I started to look at it energetically, it almost made more sense to me. Because I was like, well, it's healing us on a very multi, we're multi-layered beings. And so are animals. I and mean, we have our energetic, we have our emotional, we have our physical. And essential oils have the ability to heal all of that. Mm. Or, or, or nutrition or food or, you know, anything that's me that comes from the earth. Yes. You know, that's natural. Yeah, amazing. And animals have definitely have that already, right? Like, because... When we connect to the animals as well, we we get this sense of true connection to the earth because they are so in tune with the earth energies and with all the elements as well. So that 
I mean, this is my experience when I tune into the animals. It really helps me to ground completely. And as we connect, we already get a sense of healing for ourselves in that way. I mean, I And then so, when you apply everything else, it's like just amazing. I so agree. They're so connected to the earth and so connected to things that we um, even don't sense from atmospheric changes to changes in pressure in the atmosphere that we can't even feel. Hmm. Yeah, I remember that right before we had a hurricane, I remember Tonka was a puppy. And as a puppy, he played with a lot of toys. And I remember the whole, like it was like a week that he didn't play with one toy. And I remember I always thought it was odd. And then we had a major hurricane and the next day, all of a sudden, all the toys came out and it was kind of like, he could feel that build up in pressure mm -hmm. or something, which I had no idea was, you know, basically was happening. I mean, yes, if you listen to the news, but then, you know, the weather's not always accurate anyway. So, yeah. but he could definitely feel that. And now he still does, you know, if there's a storm coming and he'll start getting fidgety and I'll be like, why are you fidgety? And then all of a sudden, like 10 minutes later, we get a big bolt of thunder and I'm like, okay, now I get it. You know? Like, yeah. you know, so they're so connected to things, sounds, smells, you know, pressure, mm. so much more so than we are. That's why I always look to them as being such great teachers. You know, they, you know, they teach us how to live life, right? You know, they yes. know how to have, they know how to have fun. Yes. They know what's important. They know how to nap, <laughs> yeah. know how, how to rest, how to play, how to eat, you know, exactly how to, how to be in the moment, you know, they're mm. so present and, you know, that's why it's such a good lesson for us, you know, yeah. they, they're, they're in the present moment. Absolutely. hundred percent. Was um, I can't remember who it was. Someone on LinkedIn shared a post around, you know, really observing your animals and um, and I, I noticed that you have that as well. That you say that pets are a mirror, and I strongly believe that too. They are such a mirror for us, and it's all about you know what is your pet telling you, right? So I've recently gone through period of you know I had surgery I had to go through healing which was a very frustrating period for me because I'm a person that is very much in a doing space and you know um, so for me to be patient and allow the healing to take place I got absolutely anxious and, and frustrated around that whole process because it took way too long and there was a lot of pain involved but now that I look back I'm, I'm at the other end of it now which is really wonderful but when I look back at that I can see that, especially Raphael, one of my dogs, he literally just comes up to you and he then comes up with his head on my leg and then he looks up and I get this huge surge of energy as if it's going to be okay, just be patient, you need to rest. And then he comes and lays down next to me. It's like what you explained about Tonka, always having, you know, playing with the toys and stuff. Rafi is very energetic. He plays with toys as well, but he then gets into this space of, okay, now it's time to rest. And then he comes up and he does that. And even when I'm at my desk and I'm working, he will come up after an hour or so and literally stands, he jumps up and then I think I want to pick him up. And then he runs off and he goes, no, it's playtime. <laughs> you've been sitting too long mom you need to move exactly <laughs> it's like you've, you've done a bit of work now now it's time for relaxation and play and then you can go back to it right so so when i saw that you you also into that space of observe your animals they are a mirror to us i so agree with that and a lot of people don't understand that when we really observe our animals from that perspective, to to look at them and go, what are you what are you teaching me? You know, what are you telling me? And you don't have to be in tune with them in that way yet. Because I know we all are. We just have to tap back into that. Mm -hmm. But even by observing what they do we can already learn a lot from them because they definitely show us what they prefer us to do. I think sometimes even, you know, uh, Tonka does not respond well 
when I'm anxious. Like Mm -hmm. he does not like that at all. And it's so interesting to me because as I've really tried to control my anxiety for him more so originally, you know, we always do things for our kids. Well, that was how it was for me. Like I wanted to do it for myself, but I was going to control it for him because it it would make him, um, he physically wouldn't feel well. So I was like, Mm -hmm. okay, well, I'll tone down and try to control. But even when I think sometimes I'm controlling it, it must be some sort of energetic things where I'm working really hard at controlling, but I'm really not like inside. I'm really anxious. Yeah. And he'll like, and you know, when he doesn't feel well, I'll be like, Oh, I'm really sorry, bud. (laughs) I'm trying really hard to do what I need to do. But it's really that he's just reflecting back to me. What I, what I am sending out to him. And you know, and I, you know, and I don't think that's the only thing that animals respond to, obviously, you know, it's like being around kids, you know, I think kids are the Mm -hmm. same way. They pick Mm -hmm. up on whatever, however we're feeling, what we're putting off energetically, you know, and I don't know about you, but, you know, Tonka has certain people that he absolutely loves. He's really kind of discerning. And it's so interesting to me that there are, he's not a jumper. He never has been. And there's like four people in the world where that I've met where if he meets them, he wants to jump and he's so excited. And it's so yeah. funny to me. It's like, there's something about them and he just loves yeah. them. And it's mm. so sweet. There's just like this. And yeah, there are other people you can just tell he's like, no, nah, I don't really care for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that that's amazing, isn't it? Because they, they really sense a level of energy that we have within us that are, that we don't even realize. Mm-hmm, exactly. You know, it's the same as with the, when they say about dog walking. When you align your energy in the walk and you're 100% present, they walk a lot better on the lead than when we are distracted because then they get distracted and they pull and they run and they back and they do all sorts of crazy stuff. So it's all about our energy, but we have a level of energy that we may not necessarily sense or pick up on that they can Mm -hmm. because they're always in tune. Their vibration is always at a higher level than where we are at. And they're so connected and grounded that in that present moment, they sense everything. And that's why they're so great as well in, you know, detecting diseases or, you know, I've seen um, dogs that can detect when people are about to have a seizure. Mm-hmm. You know, they're being trained to that. It, that's the, the smell and, and the sensation in our bodies that shifts that they can pick up on. So, and I believe that we have that too. I mean, you talked earlier about the weather changes. I believe we can feel it too, but we don't tap into it. We ignore it. That's right. You know, we we don't pay attention to it or we're so busy that we get so distracted Mm. that we're not focused on that. I think that we're kind of taught not to, I mean, taught or through, I want to say society or what, however you want to frame it. We're not, it's not valued to pay attention to those signs. Mm. And we have to remember how valuable those signs are. Yes. You know, to be able to be in tune with, because I think in a lot of ways, I think it makes life so much, I, you know, I, I don't like the word understandable, but, you know, or, but I think it just explains or makes us feel better. It gives us comfort mm-hmm. because, for example, that you like have an issue when the weather's not good. Let's say you are more achy or more in pain more. Once you start to de- like detect that pattern, I think it's like, oh, it's just the weather. Like it's the weather. And then maybe you modify, you learn the tools or the things you need to do to kind of do that. But you begin to pay attention. And yeah. so they, they pay attention all the time, you know, yes. they, you know, they don't have to be taught or whatever, or just trained more or less, but our brains are so complex and we're thinking and planning so much all the time. Mm. It, it distracts us from, from things that are probably much more valuable <laughs> or are more valuable. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's so wonderful because when people do have animals in their, in their home, I, f- I feel that they are more aware of what goes on, you know, and that that's automatic. We don't have to specifically tune in, even though we are tuned in, but we're not aware of it. Okay. And to, to, to raise that awareness within us is really important. 
mm-hmm. because I feel when we do do that and we tune into, because we, we tune into our children, we tune into our animals, right? Because we want to do the best thing for them. Mm-hmm. And therefore we always forget ourselves, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what I notice a lot with people that I work with is that they don't look after themselves first. Mm-hmm. But when we more tune into to those energies and we become more aware of it, what it means to us, and when we use our animals as a mirror, because they always reflect back on the things that we need to work on, the more we do that, the more we are healing ourselves. You know, and sometimes it can be a tough lesson, <laughs> right? But once we do that more, it becomes a lot easier too. And then we are able to understand our animals at a much different level too, because they are actually showing us all the time that tuning in and being in that level of vibration and having those energies and being present and grounded is probably the the most important thing that we need to do right now, especially what's happening around the world. Correct. This yeah. day right, is having that time out. Right. And, you know, so one of the other things is I'm a yoga teacher and it's always, you know, a really great way to keep me grounded. But as I teach mainly on Zoom now anyway, what's so amazing is, you know, all my students who come, who have animals, who have pets, and how often there's like every pet is on every screen in every, you know, for every person, <laughs> you know, and it's just so funny because, you know, they know when, you know, Tonka comes in the room all the time when I practice or meditate mm-hmm. or do something, you know, and I'll watch my students and their pets come in, you know, and it's so funny. It's like, everybody's there, you know, like, yeah. you know, and, and I think it is something about our energy obviously shifts. We become more grounded, more present, more in touch with mm-hmm. our breath. You know, we balance out a little bit and they respond to that. You know, mm-hmm. I used to say it was my voice too, because when I teach, I have what I call my yoga voice. And my friend said to me, you should tape it because maybe it would calm him down sometimes when he's anxious. But it's so funny because there must be a tone that happens in my voice mm-hmm. that, you know, modifies and becomes very you know soothing or something and he always goes to sleep <laughs> you know yeah. you know yeah you know but so. that makes sense though because when you get into that that energy of the yoga practice yeah. then your your tone changes so the vibration changes it's like just, you get a different frequency right exactly. so exactly yeah yeah and they yeah. they respond to that mm-hmm. yeah yeah I, you know i i really believe that um yeah, that's why I, I feel like, you know, when you read about it all the time that, you know, when mm-hmm. people meditate, their animals will come right up to them and lay on mm-hmm. them, you know, and I really feel that they pick up on that vibration and the fact that they a lot of times want to be close because they feel it from you mm-hmm. and they, you know, they're feeding off of, you know, it's like a mutual vibration kind of feeling like where you're feeding off their vibration and they're feeding off yours what better bond or what a better connection is there than that really yeah exactly yeah and it teaches us as well that the more we do that you know the better it is for us because we can calm ourselves down we can really help to reduce that for ourselves too and to be still in that moment i think when animals come up to us when we meditate i mean it's um it's a reinforcement that we are taking that time out that we are grounding and we are connecting and having that, that level of, I'm getting the word soothing <laughs> for ourselves, right? Cause that's what they're showing us, you know, really that soothing moment for ourselves. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I think that, like you said, I think we need that now more than ever, mm. you know, there's so much going on in the world and we're bombarded constantly with different things that we need to ground and kind of center ourselves Mm. as an for me it's you know becomes almost an element of survival Mm. to be able to you know just navigate life and not and i guess not be negative and realize that you know that there's a lot of positivity and a lot of positive people out there in the world a lot of people who do great things you know and and I think you look at people differently. You know, when you come from a grounded sort of centered space, you respond differently. 
And mm-hmm. so you respond versus react. Yeah. And, you know, animals usually um, are really good at doing that. Like, you know, they're very, um, we say that they they have this ability, you know, you know, I always think of when animals in the wild, when they hunt, they kind of, they just, you know, they really settle, they kind of watch, they observe, they kind of work it all out. And then they know when the right time is. And I feel like yeah. if we could, you know, meditate and sort of practice or do whatever helps you get into that space. So it doesn't have to be yoga. It could be anything. I mean, mm-hmm. I have friends who garden and get into that space and that's fine mm-hmm. or play music or do art or, yeah. you know, and you can get into that space. Then you're kind of, you come upon a situation and hopefully you do all those things. You kind of mo- you observe, you take a deep breath, mm-hmm. observe some more, and then maybe you decide or you figure out how, what, how best to go forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So how can oils support us in that process? I mean, I think, you know, when we smell something, it's very hard to think of something else. Right. You know, we're very much in the present moment when we smell something, Mm -hmm. you know, and if you think about it, it really makes a lot of sense. Like when you smell really all the other senses kind of turn off usually quite a lot maybe you know and so I think it's a great way to keep us almost present and in the moment Mm -hmm. and then the whole idea to me of the breath and the fact that most oils or a lot of oils really enhance your breathing and if you think about being anxious or upset what do we tend to do the most is we hold our breath Mm -hmm. you know and all of a sudden you'll sit there and say oh my gosh I'm holding my breath or you know, because that's automatic, you know, everybody yeah. knows what it's like when something really bad happens, everybody goes, <gasps> you know, and everybody holds their breath. Yeah. And so just this idea of being able to breathe deeper, I think helps to calm down the whole nervous system, mm. you know, and relax us a little bit. And let alone, I mean, if you are using essential oils for yourself and, um, or on someone else, like to me, there's this whole idea of, you know, when I apply oils to Tonka, I'm, you know, it is that whole body, you know, the connection, the touch, you know, there's all those elements that get involved. And then you do have, you know, the chemistry of the essential oil, which interacts in the body and is, you know, take, and all these chemical reactions are taking place, which do, Mm -hmm. you know, on a scientific level or on a practical level influence what's happening in the body, maybe changing certain physiological states and affecting different systems. But on a very basic level, it's just that idea of breathing and and being able to, especially if you find an oil that you really love or yeah. that you associate with a specific memory. Yes. You know, uh, you can recall something really pleasant. I think it, you know, has another even effect on a different yeah, level. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, an emotional benefit. Yeah, and vibrationally as well. The the type of oils that you use, you can really tune into their frequency and vibration. And that's why I find oils are so personal. You know, and you've got all these different brands out there that you can test out. Um, I've gone through quite a few myself. And then you just land on a brand that really resonates with you because sometimes people ask me, oh, why are you using that particular one? And I go, well, I've got a variety because some really resonate at that frequency level and others don't. And they may be just as good as an oil. It doesn't matter in that respect. For me, it's it's all about how does it, how does it help and how does it... Um, it's almost like how does it vibrate energetically for me to be able to use that oil mm-hmm. and when that is at, at a level where i need it in that moment then yeah that's the one to use you know and then it obviously you you know you use the purest ones mm-hmm. you don't go for you know the really cheap ones in that respect because <laughs> they mostly have chemicals in them and they, they they're adjusted right they're all blended up so you do go for the purest ones um, but within that space, it, it just sort of depends how it feels. And that's why it's such a personal, a personal choice of the oils that you use. Not, not, and then I'm not even talking about, you know, do you use a lavender oil or a frankincense or, you know, 
um, geranium or whatever it is, it, it's about how does the oil make you feel in that moment? What does it do to you? Like you say, when you're really present and you, you're smelling the oil and you really in that moment, what does it do to you? What are you observing? What are you feeling? What are you smelling? What are you sensing? You know, mm -hmm. and then you can even sometimes feel the healing already take place. Yeah. I, I love that. And I think that also tends to explain why, which, you know, when I talk to people, when I'm helping them with their pets or themselves, that an oil that works for me, yes, there are the standard oils that you might recommend for certain things, but there's mm -hmm. also always other oils that you could choose. And mm -hmm. sometimes an oil that I would use or choose is not going to be the oil that you would choose and that would help you. And that explains a lot because if you look at it either vibrationally or even if you were to just kind of go more sciencey than that, you know, different genetics, different backgrounds, mm -hmm. different history, different traumas, different things have happened physically. And you have to look that my genetic history, my origin of, you know, let's say where my ancestors were from is different than somebody else's. And they might be called to use some uh, one oil and I would be called to use another oil. And sometimes I think that's interesting to look at. It's like kind of where, where were your descendants from? Yeah. Like I just think about that because sometimes I think that people, you know, let's say if you're from South America, gravitate to oils that are native to that, where mm -hmm. if you're from Eastern Europe, maybe you gravitate to that. And you know, the Middle East. And I think it's just so interesting to look at sort of, does it match? Because a lot of times it does, you mm. know, that kind of origin of, of familial origin or genetic origin kind of plays a role. Yeah. And so, so interesting, but yes, on a vibrational level, absolutely. Wow. Never thought of it to look at it from a background and ancestral point of view, even. Wow. I remember learning about a few oils that were, um, you know, the ones I think of are frankincense, some of the fir trees that come from in, in, in North America, they'll come from like, you know, the Northern part of our continent and some of the trees from South America that actually almost like share a lot of very similar chemistry. And that mm -hmm. always made so much sense to me because I was like, yeah. okay, well, there wouldn't be, like there wouldn't be a healing plant that's only available in a certain area. Like you right. know, it's not the way, you know, it's uh, everybody has access to something basically, mm. you know? So I always thought that was so interesting that there, you know, you can take trees from different continents, different parts of the world and that they'll have mm. so many similar things. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense though, when you sort of think about that, right? It makes yeah. so much sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, because before air travel and before people were so connected and could go anywhere, they had to have access to plants. And especially thousands of years ago, they had to have, mm. have access to plants or herbs or, you know, foods that were going to heal them mm. Mm. from a, for a particular ailment or situation or emotional situation. And so it makes sense that around the world there'd be different plants with similar properties or, or different foods that would contain the same vitamins, like you might want to say, or nutrients because, you know, healing was just, you know, they looked at healing as food, you know, as from the earth. Food is healing. Yeah. Food yeah, is yeah. healing and plants are healing. So how have we changed as a species that we first grabbed the modern medication compared to let's go herbal first or natural first? That, okay. that fascinates me. It's like, well, because I'm, I'm a person that goes natural first. Mm -hmm. Right. So what, what can we do as humans to shift that? What can we do more of to do that? Oh, oh goodness. goodness. It's, a, it's a wonderful question. I think we got here because one was, I think, you know, cost. I think that, you know, it got to, be, got to the point where it was a lot less money. It costs a lot less to chemically create something than to actually, you know, farm, harvest and make. And mm -hmm. so I think that, you know, was, you know, I think that was part of it. And I think also probably distribution and all those things was a lot easier. Um, 
I think we have to start to go, you know, I think we have to really um, talk as much as we can about the fact that, you know, we're nature, like we are made mm -hmm. of nature and we have to get back to nature if we truly mm -hmm. want to heal. And hopefully the more of us who kind of get on that boat, you know, get on that path yeah. and on that boat, the more um, it will change. I, I think it is changing because I think people are realizing that they have to, that some, let's say some solutions that are offered are not really addressing the issue or really just covering up and addressing a symptom. Mm -hmm. And if they really want to heal it, they have to look deeper mm -hmm. and start to look at the root cause of an issue versus just the symptom that it result that it produces. Yeah. And so I think that people are starting to look there because they're realizing, and I think we need to, I think people need to realize that they can take their, their own sort of health back. I think, you know, for a very long time, people didn't really listen to themselves. I think the more we educate people, that's really important to listen to yourself. Your body is telling mm -hmm. you something. Yeah. You know, if you want to listen and giving people the, I want to say a place to voice what's happening. Like uh, I'll use the example is I was talking to somebody who never complains about anything. And she said to me, you know, I'm just not feeling right. I'm just not feeling right. And I said to her, well, did you call the doctor? Or did you get checked out? She's like, she'll think I'm crazy. And I said, do me a favor and call her. I said, even if she thinks you're crazy, like doesn't matter. You don't feel right. Just go. But I think we have to start listening to those voices and we need to tell people that they, you know, encourage people to listen to that aspect yeah. of themselves as much as we can. It's like, you're not crazy, you know, no. go get checked out, Be especially from someone who never like talks like that. Because to me, if all of a sudden you're saying, okay, I don't feel right. There's a reason why you don't feel right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's, that's, part of the learning that we do is, you know, coming back to the grounding that the animals have so well, you know, be in that present moment. And we don't have to meditate for hours on end, but even take those five minutes and ground yourself and tune in to your body. Mm -hmm. And maybe even just do a, a mental scan, you know, Today I'm going to focus on my on my head. How does my head feel? Yeah. Is there anything there I need to pay attention to? How do my shoulders feel? Is there any tension in there? What what is that telling me? Yeah. You know, maybe I just need to sit upright or or walk around more often or just do a bit of shoulder, mm -hmm. whatever it is. All, all these simple things, yeah. but That's really funny. ask you know and do that scan to find out what is your body telling you because you're absolutely right. Whatever goes on in our body is something we need to focus on. Because our body is a manifestation on what goes on in our lives, really. And more often than not, it's it's the final straw of you're not listening. <laughs> so now I'm going to give you physical symptoms of what's happening in your life, what you may be thinking, what you're experiencing, all these things. And more often than not, that's happened to me as well. Like if I don't listen, my body will give those, those symptoms. My body will give the signs. Mm. Absolutely. And then it's like, oh my God, I need to do this, or I need to pay attention to that, or this needs to change. Right. So yeah. I just, you know, knowing, you know, at points where I've worked myself so hard and then, and I'm exhausted and then I get sick. And yes, my mm -hmm. resistance goes down, but I think it's also the body just saying, you're not going to rest. Well, I'm going to force you to rest. Yeah. You know, I'm going to sit there and say, okay, well, you're out for the count now because you've got to take it easy. You know, you've yeah. got to get, you know, you've got to get some rest. Yeah. Uh, a number of years ago, I did a workshop with a dear friend of mine and I remember it was on emotions and everything. And so we went around the room and we asked people how they felt, like, how do you feel? And so people mm -hmm. would say tired and we're like, well, that's not an emotion. Like, how do you feel? Like sad, happy, you know? And we realized in doing this class, this workshop that people really don't check in. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and it was so, I think we were at that time, which was a number of years ago, we were kind of both surprised. We were like, you know, take a moment and you get up in the morning, you're like, okay, how do I feel today? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, 
and what's going on? How does my body feel? How am I feeling emotionally? Am I anxious? Am I sad? Am I happy? Am I in a really good mood? You know, do I feel energetic? You know, I'm just kind of checking in. And mm -hmm. so, you know, when you talk about essential oils, it's like when I get up in the morning, I'm like, okay, what essential oils do I feel like today? It's not like I have this set regimen. I do sometimes, but it's much more like, okay, what do I feel like today? Mm -hmm. You know, and really the oil that comes in usually it's like, oh, I really feel like this is usually when I were to, if I were to think about it with like in a, in a much more technical way is usually exactly what I need, but that's not <laughs> where I go. It's usually just like that one that pops in my head. Like I yeah. really feel like, you know, I really feel like, you know, peppermint today and i'll be mm. like you know and i'll just be like oh okay yeah that makes sense you know? <laughs> <laughs> or there's resistance to well, where you get an oil and you go uh no i'm not really feeling that one <laughs> you have to go with it anyway because <laughs> <laughs> that's right it's so funny yeah. no i don't think so you know <laughs> <laughs> Because you know, your mind then comes in going, yeah, no, I'm not feeling that or I don't want to smell that today, but you need it. Yes. Yeah, you need it. I've got the same with necklaces. I've got a lot of crystal necklaces yes. and I usually stand in front of my cabin and I go, okay, which one am I meant to be wearing today? Mm -hmm. And sometimes right. I grab one and then I get this distinct feeling of put it down, grab the other one. And I go, but I'm not. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason. There's a reason. There's a reason. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. a reason. I, I, I do that a lot. You know, I have a lot of um, like palm crystals I hold and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I'll use them sometimes while I'm working or sometimes just, you know, I'm on a meeting and I'll grab one. Yeah. And usually I'm just like, okay, that's the one I want. It's just, you know, it's just the one that needs it. You know, I yeah. need that energy right now. Exactly. Because pe people sometimes ask me, how do you choose a crystal? And I go, the crystal chooses you. So when you walk into a crystal shop, first of all, before you even walk in, ground yourself. Take a few deep breaths and just ask which crystal is coming with me today. Mm -hmm. And then when you walk into the shop, just really feel into what corner you're drawn to. Mm -hmm. Where in the shop are you drawn to? And just allow that to happen. And sometimes we go for the ones that we really see and go, okay, there's a nice shiny one. That's a, you know, I like, I like a pink one today or a blue one today. I go, but it's often the one that you least expect that you then pick up and then you hold it, particularly in, in your left hand and then feel the crystal. And then when it goes all warm and fuzzy and you can feel the energy, your hand starts to tingle, then that's the one that needs to come home with you. Mm -hmm. But it's where you're drawn to. You know, and with the oils and, and crystals and perhaps some other things as well, like I've got pendulums and it's like, okay, which one do I use today? Which one am I meant to be working with today? And mm -hmm. it will jump out. You know? I, I use crystals a lot when I work with animals. I, I, I just, I, I don't know. I'll hold crystals. If I do Reiki, I work with it. I, I hold crystals all the time. Yeah. Sometimes I'll even put them around them, but, you know, depending on, you know, the circumstances, but I just, I think because they are so connected to the earth, mm -hmm. I just feel that it's a level that they understand so well, I guess. Yeah. 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 They, they, it's really a level they understand, but I think it is a, it's almost like you're in conversation with whatever it is, whether it be the oil mm -hmm. And I think if people look at it like that, like, you know, it's like, okay, it's a relationship, it's a conversation and, you mm -hmm. know, and you have to be willing to be open to the communication, right? Absolutely. Because energy is, is a level of conversation mm -hmm. That's right. that you have. And it's, it's the channel that opens up. Um, yeah. Cause uh, crystals in particular, you can actually have a conversation with a crystal Right. So it's just really amazing to, to just be still with it and see what it tells you. And with the oils as well, once you smell them, it, it tells you a story. It tells you, you know, why it is needed in the moment for you to smell that particular oil. And that's just so wonderful. 
because the frequency and the vibration opens up that channel for us to be able to receive that information. And animals have that automatically. They don't have to do any, you know, meditation or anything yeah. for it. <laughs> at that right. level, right? Whereas for us, because we are always so busy buddies and we're in our headspace, we, we need to take that time and, and consciously meditate and consciously tune in until it becomes more of a... Of a Sorry, the dog's in the background. <laughs> Until it becomes a bit of a, um, um, not a bit, but it becomes a second nature to us to tune in. Mm -hmm. The more we practice that, the easier it becomes. And then it's it's like, yeah, I can just have a, have a conversation with myself or I can just have a conversation with my dog, mm -hmm. with my cat, you know, and that, that becomes a lot easier then. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, it's, I was talking to a client about that because I was saying when your thinking mind gets in the way or you're in your thinking mind, your, mm. you know, your to-do list, your, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of mm. like all the, you know, it takes over. It's very mm. loud. <laughs> you know, nothing to me, nothing's usually nothing else is getting through. You know, yeah. you have your agenda. It's very, you know. You know, we're all, we all are doers and yes. we're not, you know, we all do really well. We don't be very well. Yes. <laughs> a lot of the time. That's very well said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But how true is it? How true it is? Cause we're not taught Absolutely. to be, we're not taught to be beers. We're taught to be doers, mm. you know? Yeah. So. Well, that's one one thing that I, I think you and I are both wanting to change around the world. Yeah, I know. I think so. Exactly. Be more in the <laughs> being stage. That's right. Be more in the be. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any sort of tips or a golden nugget for the audience? Um, yeah, I would say... Take a moment, like we just said, could be a few minutes a day, sit quietly, you know, walk quietly. You know, I remember one of the things I did was I used to, I used to always listen to music when I walked or something it could be a podcast or a book or something is to actually just listen to nature, you know, hear the birds tune yeah. in, like see if you can get into a, some sort of quiet kind of meditative space. Yes. And if your pets can be with you, bring them in along for the ride, you know, and just see if you can create that bond, that connection. And maybe it is using a crystal and you hold it, or maybe it's using an oil because then you're, you know, you're applying and you're in the zone, you're in the space um, of doing that. But I think that that's a really strong bond and relationship that if you develop and start to cultivate, it's only going to, um, it's only going to be beneficial. Like the, it can only move forward and ahead. Like there's no, no way that it, it can't help on some level. And yeah. I would say, I would encourage you to do it just even a few minutes a day and just see after a few weeks, if there's any shifts, yeah. like look back and just see how you've been and how your pet is and whether, you know, some of the things that would upset you about what they did, you know, kind of thing shifts. Usually when they act out, they're trying to get our attention for some reason, you know, it's usually why, and maybe that bond or that connection that you pay with them or that mutual kind of time will help dissipate that a little bit. Mm. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. And it also helps to really, yeah, like you say, you know, have that bond and make it stronger between the two of you as well. That's really important. Yeah. And then you can feel each other at a much different level. That's right. Yeah, that's amazing. Wonderful. So where can people find you? Oh, I'm on LinkedIn all the time. So if people want to get on LinkedIn and they want to connect with me there, um, Facebook, just under my name, is um, mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook. I have my website, which I think has been scrolling along the bottom there <laughs> at janjeremias.com. And if you want to check out my book on essential oils, um, spoiler pet EO for essentialoil.com. But I'm really happy to connect with anybody. Um, feel free to, you know, send me a question, set up a time to chat and just 
you know, have a conversation about yourself or your pet. And let's see if we can, you know, strive, I guess, you know, to me, it's a mutual health goal. You know, to me, I always think of myself as if I'm healthier, my pets are healthier and vice versa, you know, because we are so interconnected. So just like as a mission, a striving to move everybody into a healthier, you know, or, or a better place of well-being. Beautiful. I'm so with you on that. <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you so, so very much, Jen. It's been absolutely amazing to talk to you. And thank, thank you for you. all the work that you do, for all the beautiful animals out there okay. and the humans. It's really amazing. Thank oh, you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and also honor your work, which is just beautiful work. Thank and, you. And I'm sure we'll be connecting again soon. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Wonderful. <laughs>
Thank you so much for listening to yet another inspiring episode of Connecting Soul Beings podcast. I love receiving your comments, stories and feedback as they are truly inspiring. So please take some time to comment on this episode below. If you love the show, you can help us by sharing and liking it via your favorite podcast platform and our website. And if you feel that we can work together in helping you to connect to your inner self and the animals, then hop on over to biancaderose.com or find me on LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram under Bianca de Rose. Thank you again so much. Say hi to your pet from me and stay connected with love and grace.